A question that's come up recently is how to prepare images for publishing on a website. In this video, I'll take you through the steps to ensure your colours display correctly, images appear sharp and they load quickly. Here's a finished image which is currently saved in the TIFF format and it's about 239 megabytes in size. Whilst TIFF images are great for preserving image quality, they aren't good for the internet. This huge image will stop any website page from loading properly. When displaying images on a website, there can be a trade-off between quality and speed, but you need to know how to achieve both. If we magnify this image to 100%, you can see that it's packed with fine detail. I shot it using a Fuji X-T5, which is a 40 megapixel camera, and it's why this image is so large. If we select the Resize Document option in Affinity's Document menu, you can see that it measures over 7000 by 5000 pixels. This is far too large for displaying on a website, so we need to downsample it first. We can do this by reducing the number of pixels in the image to something suitable for a website. That's also going to reduce the size of the file, making it much quicker to load. Remember, the speed a website page loads is extremely important. This means that if you're uploading your images to someone else's website, like Instagram, your images will be automatically processed to minimise their size. When that happens, the quality of your image is usually ignored. The priority is making the image small so that it doesn't slow down the website. That's why it's better to resize your images to the correct dimensions before uploading them. In Affinity Photo, we can do this by using the Resize Document dialog we just opened. But before you resize the image, you first need to know the best dimensions in pixels for the website, as each one can be different. Instagram, for example, is 1080 by 1080 pixels. On Flickr, it's 1600 pixels wide by 1024 high. If you upload images that are larger than this, they're going to be resized to make them easier to display. On my Lenscraft website, the page width is 1080 pixels, but I like to size my images at 1280 pixels. I do this so that visitors can click to enlarge them, and my website doesn't resize them unless they're over 1920 pixels wide. For this example, let's make the image 1280 pixels wide. I can do this by entering the width in the first field of the dialog. Now notice this chain icon between the two fields. This means that Affinity Photo will keep the image aspect ratio. In other words, it will alter the height proportionately to the new width. If I click the link icon, it toggles it off and on. When it's on, you'll see Affinity Photo change the height when I click on the field. Now let's talk about the DPI because many people find this confusing. For displaying an image on most websites, the DPI doesn't matter and it's only really important for printing. What matters for displaying an image on a website is the pixel dimensions, so I'll just leave the DPI set to 240. Now, something that is important is the resampling method. When we make an image larger or smaller, the resampling method determines how it's done. It controls what new pixels are added or discarded, and that can affect our perception of the image sharpness. Some methods will work better than others. For this example, I'll pick one of the two Lanxos methods. I can then click the Resize button to resize the image. Now look at my navigator window. You can see that we're viewing this image at a little over 200% magnification, and it still looks good. If we reduce the magnification to 100%, the detail becomes more difficult to see. One of the side effects of significantly reducing the image dimensions that we have here is that it won't appear as sharp. We therefore need to apply some sharpening to correct the problem. It's also another good reason to resize your image before uploading to a website so you have the opportunity to sharpen it again. To add the sharpening to our resized image, I'll select the layer menu. I'll then come down to the new live filter layer section where I'm going to see the sharpening group. This contained three options for sharpening the image and we'll use the unsharp mask filter for this example. In the dialog, I'll set the radius to 0.8, which works well for display sharpening like this. I can then increase the factor slider to add more sharpening. Now if you add too much sharpening, you'll see the details in the image begin to appear too bright. 
All we want to do is add a little sparkle to give the image more impact. Usually something between 0.5 and 1 is all that's needed for most images. It also doesn't matter that the sharpening is applied to everything, because we're talking here about display sharpening. If you now look at the Layer Studio panel, you can see the filter is attached to the layer. When I turn it off and on, you might be able to see the difference it's making to this image. Now that our image is the correct size and has been sharpened, we need to export it. In Affinity Photo, we do this using the Export option in the File menu. This opens the Export option, where we can select the file format that we want to use. What we need is a format that produces a small file size, but retains image quality. Traditionally, this has been the JPEG format, but a lot of websites now use the WebP format, which can produce smaller image sizes, but with a similar quality to JPEG. Personally, I would still export the image using the JPEG format to maintain maximum compatibility. I would only use the WebP format if I know the website supports it. Many handle the conversion from JPEG to WebP automatically for you anyway. After selecting the JPEG option, we can select one of the presets in the drop-down list. If we have the best quality option selected, the quality slider is set to 100%. That's going to produce an image that's about 1.5 megabytes, which is still too large if we want the page to load quickly. Now switch it to a high quality setting, and the size drops substantially. This is quite usable now, but we can reduce it further by selecting medium quality. And even though this is a medium quality setting, you won't notice any difference in the image quality at this size. But there is one other important thing that we need to do, which is set the colour space or profile of the image. Currently, the image uses the Profoto RGB colour space, which could look dreadful on many displays. If we look at the advanced section of the dialog, we can choose the sRGB profile. This is much better and will display the colours correctly on most devices. I also like to embed this profile in the image. Having done that, we can click the export button to export the finished image. If we select it, we see that it's now only 162 kilobytes, which will load quickly on any website and it looks great. The only thing that I'm missing is a watermark to let people know that I shot it. To see how to add that, watch this video next. Thanks for watching today, and I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon for another video.